Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Well, Louisiana is known for lots of wonderful things, including the fact that it is a mecca for artists of every kind. If you love to write, to draw, to sculpt, to paint, to sing, do you know how to control the use of your innovations? Well, perhaps you've heard of intellectual proper property, but really, what is it? We're glad to have attorney Seth Nurbass here to help explain it. Seth has been working in intellectual property law for about 30 years. He has lectured, taught classes about patent law, and is a registered patent attorney with the firm of Garvey, Smith, Nurbass, and North. Seth, we're glad to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. So this is a very interesting topic. I mean, something that we have been talking a lot about. When you talk about patents and trademarks marks and copyrights, it seems very complicated. But if you are an artist of any kind, if you write anything, if you, let's say, you want to patent a slogan, which we were talking about earlier, that whole Houdat story, which we're going to get into, how complicated is this? Well, as we were talking about before, um, I normally recommend that if you're interested in registering a trademark or getting a patent on an invention that you hire an attorney. Mm -hmm. If you are simply trying to register a copyright, that's something you can do online. And often um, people, artists and, and writers can do that on their own as well as an attorney can. Yeah. Not always, but, but often they'll have about the same success. Okay. But for patents, it's so hard to get a patent that will, uh, to file a patent application that will issue as a valid, valuable, enforceable patent that uh, really a patent attorney ought to be hired. It gets to be a little bit complicated. It's very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe before we, we talk about the specifics of any one thing, maybe it would be helpful if you kind of define for us what is the difference between a copyright, a patent, a trademark, a trade secret. Give us sure. a general overview. Okay. All right. Patents protect inventions. If you come up with something new, useful, non-obvious, and you convince the patent office that it is new, useful, and non-obvious. You can get a patent that's good for about 20 years from date of filing. Mm -hmm. If you have a slogan or a smell or a sound, um, but more often a phrase uh, that you use to distinguish your goods and services from those of others, you register that as a trademark. Okay. And then if you write a book, you paint a painting, um, you sing, write a song, anything artistic, you can register that as a, a copyright with the, the U.S. Li Library of Congress, and, and you can do that online. And so to protect the use of any of that, is it necessary that I do any one of these things? No. Um, the only thing that you must protect through registration are inventions. So if you want to protect an invention, you must get a patent. But if, you, if you're using a trademark, you get rights through actual use. You get better rights if you register, okay. but you do get rights through actual use. And with copyrights, copyright protection is automatic in most countries in the world, including the United States. All right, and one last thing. I had mentioned a trade secret because we talked about that in preparation for the show. Right. What is a trade secret? A trade secret is anything that derives a value to a company or to an individual uh, because it's not generally known and it's kept secret. The best way to protect a trade secret is to only tell it to people with the need to know. So if you have, if you have a trade secret formula in a, in a company, mm -hmm. uh, it might be best to tell some of your employees about half the formula and the others the other <laughs> half and then mix so it an yourself. An example would be the secret recipe to Coca-Cola. That's right. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's, a that's one that's been protected for over a hundred years through being kept secret. And other, give one or two typical examples, uh, maybe more local or... Of, of trade secrets? Any, well, it doesn't have to be local, but some to give people other, are there other types of trade secrets that are not formulas to a cookie or a soda? Yeah, maybe a, a method of cleaning um, a tank, an oil well tank. There may be some chemicals that you use, there may be some process, some temperature that mm -hmm. you need to get to or something else that, that could make your process work a lot better mm -hmm. than your competitors. And you don't write down the secret and then give it to the uh, copyright, I mean to the, uh, to the, to the government. Or no, no. Because <laughs> then, then somebody in the office can look at it, right? No, but it is a good idea to record your trade secret in writing and maybe keep it in a safe. Because if you're the only one in your company who knows it, right and you get hit by a truck Something or happens to you, then you get amnesia, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this Houdat case because you mentioned slogan, yeah, and this is all about the slogan. This is a big Orleans. deal. Right. right. And well, for Saints fans right. everywhere, it's right. a big deal. Let's yeah, so about. help us under understand what's going on with that. Okay. <clears throat> Houdat, as John mentioned earlier, has been around forever. Right. And if you read Moby Dick, there's a quote about Houdat in Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been the um, subject of songs as well for many years. Mm -hmm. And then in the 1980s, maybe the Monastery Brothers wrote a song and um, registered, I think they registered um, a, uh, a trademark 
for who that with the with the federal government I'm not sure mm -hmm. um, and then they entered into some deal with the NFL and I don't remember all the details but when the Saints were on the way to win the Super Bowl yes. who that became really popular right. again and everyone started putting who that on t-shirts and then the Monastery brothers came out and said hey Where's our money? We own who that. So well, the actually, first started sending letters to people who were merchandising it, putting on hats and T-shirts and cigarette lighters, saying, "We own that. You can't use it. You have to stop, or you have to pay us a royalty or a piece of uh, the commission, right, to to to, to use that." Right. right, and and in, and as I was telling Shauna earlier, in general, um, trademarks are supposed to be something like Coca-Cola, Nike. You see a name, you associate that product with the name and you expect a certain level of quality, consistent mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with Houdat. People like Houdat on shirts because it conjures up the thought of the Saints, you know, the, the, the Saints fans. The team, the fans. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So people aren't buying Houdat t-shirts because they think that that t-shirt has a certain quality guaranteed by the Monastery Brothers. They're buying the t-shirt because they like the phrase Houdat. Right. So it's really not acting as a trademark in that sense mm -hmm. and therefore I don't the think... argument against the, the trademark argument of the Monastery Brothers. But, Correct. But they, some people are paying them royalties. Because for sometimes this. it's easier to pay royalties than to pay an attorney to fight. Really? Okay. Really. Those darn lawyers, you know, they <laughs> mess up everything, right? They, and, and, and that's a reality. You right. know, the lawyers say, we're going to take you to court, we're going to fight you, and then you're going to owe us a lot of money for everything you already sold with that label on there. And people say, I don't have a lawyer and I can't fight this. I'll just give you a little piece of my profits. I'm making good money. Right. Yeah. But does it, does it mean that they own it, though? Just because these people don't want to fight it, does it mean that they own it? Um, no. Okay. No. Just because people are, are not willing to fight. I think. Ultimately, if someone is willing to take them to court and wait for a court judgment, mm -hmm. then we'll know who really owns who that. But so far, no one's been willing to do that. All right. Well, a fascinating topic. Um, obviously, we, we could spend the whole rest of the show on it. What do you say we, we, we move on? What, what are some important changes in intellectual property law coming? There's a big date coming up. Yeah, March of 2013, we are changing from a first to invent country to a first to file country. And briefly, because we want to get to briefly. a couple more questions, what does that mean? Okay, in the United States, since, um, since our inception, we've had a patent law that said the first inventor gets a patent. And if there are two guys who are in the patent office at about the same time with the same invention, they fight it out to see who actually invented first and try to prove who invented first. Mm -hmm. Other countries for years, instead of said, look, that's too much trouble, first guy to file his patent application gets a patent. Very simple, you just look at filing dates. So we are switching to that system. I think it'll, it'll be helpful for most people. It's gonna make things a lot easier. So if you have an invention, get to the patent office, file your patent <laughs> and say, I'm the first inventor. Exactly. And if somebody else actually invented it before you, but they're asleep, I mean, they're, they don't move fast. They, they, they lose their they right snooze, to get a patent. Lose. Exactly. Okay, okay. so very, very so That's the major change. Very important to do that. Okay, right. and, and are, are there any deadlines when we're talking about making right. these the, applications? Okay, well first, since we're going to first to file, you want to file as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. But you do have a year from the time that you first put the invention on sale in the United States, put it in public use in the, in the United States, or describe it in a printed publication anywhere in the world, like a blog on the internet. Okay. So you have one year from that time. But it's gotta be your own invention that's talked about. Under our present law, it could be someone else's invention, and as long as you file within a year of the time you, um, you invented, you're okay. But um, that's, that's changing. So now, you really need to file early. Early. Bottom line. <laughs> That's File bottom early. line. File early. Right. Okay. We've got lots more questions. We want our viewers to get in on this conversation. We're having a great one, and we're going to continue to have a conversation. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll get to your questions, so stay tuned.